Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. If you remember, Panasonic had announced they were going to increase the energy density of the 2170 cells at Giga Nevada by 5% and increase the total output by 10%. They had also said that the new battery cells would enable faster charging. And back in mid-October, the Model Y long-range version did get a range increase from 316 to 325, and the performance went from 291 to 303. This makes for a 2.6% increase on the long range and 4% on the performance. So we got news from Reddit user Corio13 who shared quote, Model 3s on the way to Europe right now already have new Panasonic cells. When shipping to Europe, Tesla already sends the papers to the customer before the car arrives so that they can be registered beforehand and a smooth pickup is guaranteed. That is why some German owners already have registration for their cars that are due to be picked up in late November or December. These papers state a battery capacity of 82 kilowatt hours. For the 2019 and 2020 Model 3, the capacity in the same papers was 79 kilowatt hours. This would be a 3.8% increase in capacity. These figures are assumed to be the gross capacity. As we know, only a percentage of the total battery pack capacity is usable, which is also called the net capacity. Prior to this improvement, the EPA listed the gross capacity for the long range Model 3 as 78 kilowatt hours and and a roughly 72 to 75 kilowatt hour net capacity. After this update, the 82 kilowatt hour is now most likely the new gross capacity resulting in a roughly 78 kilowatt hour net or usable capacity. Elon did tweet back in March 2017 that the Model 3s had a 75 kilowatt hour pack due to a shorter wheelbase on the Model 3 when compared to the Model S. This 3.8% increase from 79 kilowatt hours gross to 82 is is speculatively being pinned on the recent Panasonic announcements. A lot of us were wondering if the increased capacity per cell would result in 5% fewer cells being used, or the extra energy density would result in more capacity. It seems as though the latter is the answer. We can safely assume that the Model 3 range increase to 353 for the long range variant does indeed already factor in this kilowatt hour change. And just in case anyone is a bit confused, this has nothing to do with the new 4680 format, as these improvements are to the 2170 cells made by Panasonic for Tesla at Giga Nevada for the Model 3 and why. Next up, we got some news that Tesla declined to participate in the union at Giga Berlin in order to pay more to their workers, among other reasons. Giga Berlin job salaries for folks without an education or who are unemployed are set to start at 2,700 euros per month, which is reportedly very high for the region. This is roughly 3,188 US dollars. Joachim Freire, head of worker agency at Frankfurt, said that discussions are still ongoing with Tesla about the salary plan for Giga Berlin employees, but the lowest pay for base workers has already been set. Freer also said that people who have vocational training could expect to be paid at least 3,500 euros per month, which would be 4,133 US dollars. Wages which, by the way, should ease any concerns from skeptics that have said Tesla would pay employees below union levels. For phase one of the hiring process, about 7,000 workers are expected to be hired by Tesla. Later, probably sometime around around 2022, another 5,000 employees are set to be hired, and the expectation is that four out of every five jobs would be filled by a local applicant from the region. But probably the coolest part of this news bit, in my opinion, is where Freer said, quote, for Tesla, it is not a no-go to hire someone who has been out of a job for a long time or who has no completed vocational training. This is a statement that many other companies do not make. End quote. In some Starlink news, we get the long-awaited confirmation that Starlink has been approved in Canada and invites are expected to be received by some Canadians in the coming days and weeks. The IESD, or Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada, made this decision before some were expecting and it could be due to the growing consumer interest in Starlink that was shown by the local petitions. However, there have not yet been any ground stations built in Canada yet, so the first user 
users in Canada will need to be very close to the US-Canada border. And Michael Sheets on Twitter, a space reporter, told us that Jonathan Hoffler, the VP of Starlink, confirmed that the company aims to lower the cost of the user terminal over time, which is currently $499, saying, quote, as the lower the cost to acquire a customer, the more customers we can potentially serve, end quote. Hoffler also added that they will adjust Starlink's pricing as necessary to individual markets, which is great news. This means the price in the United States will likely not be the same in other parts of the world as the service expands so Starlink can be competitive in any market they enter. To wrap up the Starlink news for today, we got some news from a German translation that Starlink could be set to launch in Germany before the end of this year as Starlink is already building ground stations there. In Germany, almost 20% of all households are not yet provided with internet access with speeds of more than 100 megabits per second. Go ahead and screenshot this translation if you want to read the whole thing. We got some news from Maria Murano yesterday that documents filed with the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality confirm that Tesla does plan to manufacture battery cells at Giga Texas. This isn't really news as we knew this would be the case, but it confirms what we knew to be true. Tesla does need to perfect things still with the 4680 pilot line in Fremont before exporting this process anywhere else, so the focus of Giga Texas should still be on the Model Y and Cybertruck production as any initial 4680 cell demand can still come from Fremont. Fremont. The Model Y production at Giga Texas is still expected to start sometime in summer 2021. To wrap up today's episode, Tesla stock finished down on the day $10.90 or 2.59%. The Nasdaq finished down 1.37%. But that'll do it for today's episode. Please take a moment to like the video if you did. Consider subscribing for more Tesla content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I hope you have a great day.